Welcome back. I'm Tedward and thanks to Bond Group in Waltham, Massachusetts. We're driving the iconic Mercedes Roadster. This is the R107, the 1987 560 SL. And this beautiful Roadster in red has a 5.6 liter, well, almost 5.6 liter V8 with a Bosch injection system making close to 240 horsepower. At least it did in 1987. Not sure what it does today, but that's all right because this car is all about riding a wave of torque. And anyone who's driven or owned one of these knows that it's probably the most relaxing luxury cruisers you can have, even in modern day. I genuinely enjoy driving this. In fact, my roommate had a 380 for a long time. We misbadged it as a 560. And although that one was very rough around the edges, it still got the job done for many years and always turned heads. That's the thing about these cars. They still look really beautiful today. So let's take a look under the hood. I want to show you what's under the giant Mercedes emblem up front. This is how you do it. That's how you brand a vehicle. We reach in here, find our little tab. Up we go on the giant garage door springs. And here's our power plant, proper front engine V8 for Mercedes-Benz. What a cool thing this is. And the beauty of the 560 SL, even though it doesn't have rear seats, there's loads of space back here for stuff. You could actually very practically use this car year round if you don't have to deal with snow. But the trunk as well, plenty of luggage. So if you have two people, you are going to be on your merry way for your weekend getaways. They were built like tanks. The fact that you still see these driving around today is quite impressive. And the run was long for the R107, starting production in 1971 and going out to 1989. So we're close to the end of the run on this. And although it's a manual top, it's not too troublesome to put up. Now, if you're caught in a rainstorm, it is gonna take a minute to try to get this up and on that roof. Because if you notice, you need a special tool to screw that in. but this black top matches the car beautifully and that just settles right in. Then you take your little tool, don't lose the tool, do not lose the tool, and that's how you clasp that back into place. It is quite an interesting vehicle because it's a college student's car, it's an old man's car, it's a sporty, classy dude's car, it's kind of everything and it's just an enjoyable thing to drive. When we sit in these seats, I mean, it really is like a couch. This is, this is some heavy padding right here. And then we're greeted with our giant Mercedes-Benz wheel and an automatic four-speed transmission. So let's start it up and you can hear the iconic buzzing of the R107. Ah yes, familiar sound to all. She jumps to life with her probably fairly inefficient large V8. But that's okay. Because the point of the vehicle is just to get you there and it is relatively reliable. These things are still around and you see them driving all over the place, especially in California where you can keep the roof down. You know, although it's a roadster, you'd almost want to call it a spider or a speedster because no one ever puts the roof up on these things. Now I've driven a lot of these. One of the signature features of these cars is when you put them into drive, they lurch forward aggressively. This one is pretty smooth. That's not so bad. We have an incredible turning radius actually, but most notably a heavily assisted power steering system. So you don't need to put much effort into driving it in addition to the fact that you've got this big giant wheel that gives you a whole bunch of leverage. really does rely on all this low-end torque so that displacement allows it to just waft along and 
you know, you don't really find yourself breaking 3000 RPM very often in the car because you just don't need to. It's not the point of the car to be a hot rod, although it does have enough torque to certainly get out of its own way and merge onto the highway in pretty much any scenario. So you never feel underpowered, but you always feel like it's on reserve. Let's go jump out to the highway, see how she cruises, and then we'll find some country back roads to really enjoy the top-down experience with our grumbly high displacement V8. Such a smooth transmission. This is like the true glory of a torque converter automatic really embodied in the 560 SL. But look at this, 1500 RPM, 1600 RPM, and I can just lean on it and we're off. Little downshift. Wonderful. 70 miles an hour, turning about 22, 2300 RPM. Nothing in this car. Everything is just so effortless. We've got our economy gauge, which is essentially just manifold pressure. But as we dive into the throttle, you'll see it go way down, telling us we're using lots of fuel. I'm pretty sure we're using lots of fuel, no matter what. Cornering, not its strong suit. But it'll still do it. It's still an entertaining car to chuck into a corner. I mean, it's balanced for sure. There's just so much body roll, which I guess is its own entertainment. I love the way it idles. There's always a sense of impending torque. This is not a slow car. Even by today's standards, this is still relatively quick, which is amazing. I, I just am so in love with this. I would love to drive one of these every day in the summer because, you know, I love a convertible. You get to be out in nature, but not only that, because of the time that this was made, there's no nannies. There's not a whole lot in the way of safety, which, you know, for better or worse, gives us the visibility you know you've got a nice low rear end so you can see everything behind you and to the side and although it's still a bit of a lumbering couch it always wants to go you find yourself braking quite a bit in this car just because it's it's default mode and as a as it's coasting is to just continue moving it wants to go so you find yourself off throttle a lot and even on the brakes quite a bit Like I said earlier, the steering is light, but it's pretty tactile and you can always tell what's going on with the front end. What's nice too, and this is weird, there's like a little bit of play and it's not dead play. It's just that not a whole lot happens in about this much steering. And some might look at that and say, oh, well, that's no good. I want immediacy in my steering. But on the other hand, it's almost luxury play. It's like the way a Bentley or a Rolls Royce would have this little bit of play before it starts engaging those front wheels in an aggressive manner. And there's a real charm to that because cruising around in this at safe legal speeds is actually quite enjoyable. We're thinking about the perfect two car solution. I think in 1987, I'd have a 3.2 liter Carrera from Porsche and I'd have one of these. That would definitely get the job done. Maybe a Land Rover for the winter. That way I've got a reliable air cooler, a tank of a Mercedes, 
and then the Land Rover, which will be, you know, in and out of service regularly. But that's fine because it'll get us through the winter. Starting to get a taste of fall here. Leaves already coming off the trees early September. Ooh, hoo, hoo. This is the perfect car for a New England fall. Blast that heat when it gets cold, but keep the roof down. I feel like that's the challenge, you know? You don't want to ever put the roof up on this car. You want to keep it down and enjoy it for as long as you can. But it does have a hard top. And that hard top is pretty effective and it does a great job of, of turning it into a coupe. Now the R107, there was also a C107, which was the SLC, which was a coupe version of the SL. A little more rare and stopped production a bit earlier than this, but still a very handsome car. I, as much as I love the SLC, I do think that the SL, the Roadster, is the way to go. I think maybe from a collector's standpoint, the SLC is maybe more interesting and more unique, but this is the one you actually want to get out and drive. The main takeaway from the 560 SL is just how effortless and luxurious it is. I mean, look, we're going to go over some railroad tracks. They're not bad railroad tracks, but I barely felt that between the suspension, the sidewall and the tires, and the big old cushion in my seat. This is a really absorbing place to be, where it just takes away all of the challenges of your drive. It's very nice. So. The other thing is because we've got this wave of torque that we can just rely on with this a small press of that throttle, you know, you're never asking for a whole lot. You don't need to get the revs up. It's always on tap. exceptionally long gearing. We've got to wave to our old Mercedes friends, but it's a four speed. And that's really cool that because it's a four speed, it's not neutered because it has all this torque. So even though it's got these big long gears, it can still get out of its own way. And you know, I gotta say, even some of the, the Mercedes that came after this, you know, they feel a lot dated by their gearboxes. This gearbox still matches this car quite well. Would it have been nice to have this in a manual? Of course. Of course it would have been cool to have a four or five speed manual gearbox. But I also think that that may have taken away from the vibe of this car. This is a beautiful Saab. That looks really good. Hello. The vibe of this car is low effort, high quality. And that's exactly what the R107 delivers. And unlike, let's say, and I know it's crazy to compare, unlike Rolls-Royce and Bentley, which try to mask the sound of the powertrain, they really do try to silence everything. This still has a beautiful rumble that lets you know that you've got some muscle from Germany backing you up. We've got a CRV in the way, we can't go crazy, but I am genuinely surprised at its athleticism. There's a lot of body roll, it's not out there to set lap times at all, but it actually can get around a corner and it's well balanced. So I do find that there's a lot of charm in the handling characteristics of the 560 SL. Super smooth downshift.
So there you have it. The Mercedes 560 SL, the R107 in 2021 is still it. It's still cool. It still looks great. People still appreciate seeing them on the road. I still appreciate driving them. And that's a great thing to have, a car that drives as good as it looks. And this is a phenomenal driver if you get yourself a good one. And The weekend, I think, just did a video with a bunch of these in a parking lot doing some formation driving, which was fun. So that tells me that even, I don't know if he's a car guy or not, but obviously it fit the aesthetic and it still looked cool enough for him to use. So, you know, there's definitely some pride in these cars that has not faded. So if you're looking for a cool, comfortable cruiser with the top down for the summer, fall months, I, I still gotta say, an R107 is the way to go. Special thanks to the Bond Group for putting me behind the wheel of yet another beautiful vehicle. Thank you guys for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing, especially to those Patreon supporters who really make this content possible with anything from a dollar a month to $10 a month. Really, every bit adds up to help support the channel and the podcast. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. At a standstill, you will notice that you need a bit of brake pressure because it's clamoring to go. If you start lifting at all, you are moving forward. So you do need to kind of pay attention. I do know some people that drive these and they like to shift into neutral when they come to a stop just to not have to apply as much brake pressure. It's not uncomfortable, but it is something you need to think about a little bit when you're driving it in traffic.